About 60,000 Americans are diagnosed with stage zero or what some call the earliest form of breast cancer each year. Standard treatment can include a lumpectomy, mastectomy, or other treatment. But after Toronto researchers found surgery does not improve survival rates in these cases, the question of how to treat but not over-treat cancer is on the table. Joining me is breast cancer survivor and blogger Donna Pinto and Dr. Rima Batra, medical oncologist at Sharp Grossmont Hospital. In Dr. Batra, briefly describe what many people refer to as stage zero breast cancer. What is it? We call it um, DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ. And what that means is that we have found um, cancerous appearing cells inside the ducts um, that are in the breast. So they have not invaded into the breast tissue, but, but they are in the ducts. And so the concern is, is that eventually they will turn into an invasive breast cancer. So and that's how it's been treated up to this point. But this study looked at 100,000 patients, and it was published in the prestigious uh, Journal of American Medical Association, or JAMA, mm -hmm. oncology issue. So will this study, do you think, stop surgeries or the current standard treatment in dealing with DCIS? I don't think the standard of care is going to change based on this study, because um, this, unfortunately, wasn't a randomized control trial that was looking at prospective data, and that's usually when we hold ourselves back and say, okay, let's change the standard of practice now. But I do think this is going to fuel studies going forward. So the studies, just to be clear, looked at actually patient records of 100,000 people right, over 20 right. years, but nothing of the actual patient's as they were undergoing treatment. No, no. I see, I see. Now, Donna, uh, you were diagnosed with DCIS yeah. in 2010. Uh, how were you treated? So I had surgery which um, diagnosed the DCIS. It was called a wide excision, which I didn't even know at the time was really the same as a lumpectomy. Um, so at that point, I had a positive margin and was advised to have a mastectomy or a partial mastectomy plus seven weeks of daily radiation. And that's when I said, um, I didn't want to do those standard treatments, and I looked into um, the alternatives and um, just did a lot of research, and I found some doctors that were saying we're over-treating this, and sure. that a lot of these could likely just be nothing, and I don't even think that it is cancer. So you you um, opted out of the surgical treatments, you became a nutritionist, you've, you've yes. done some other alternative treatments. How are you dealing with the cancer now? Or how, I shouldn't say right. the cancer, I the DCIS cancer, right. uh, uh, you know, the calcifications right, right now. I, I consider it a condition that is, um, some are likely to become cancer and some aren't. So I just go about my life in a very healthy manner. I do a lot of yoga and exercise and I'm a nutritionist, I eat very well and take all those integrative strategies. And then I also monitor every year with an MRI or ultrasound or a thermogram. So that's that you are still monitoring and watching. So yes. uh, Dr. Botcher, this brings me to regardless of treatment options, uh, with this study in mind, uh, what would you tell your patients about breast cancer prevention or treatment of DCIS right now? Well, I would still put um, on the table the standard treatment options that they have, the lumpectomy versus um, the mastectomy. Um, but if somebody comes to me with this article, I think we can have an educated discussion about doing watchful waiting. Um, the study did point out patients who are higher risk um, for invasive cancer, um, and those patients, um, I probably would not go along with a plan like Donna's, but I think you know we can always talk about doing watchful waiting in, certain, in a certain subset of patients. And Donna, that brings me to one of your blog points out that yeah. not a whole lot of people were aware of DCIS. Right. Um, again, thinking of this article now, and it's out on the table right. here, how do you think people should educate themselves about what it is and the options? Because there are those people who may have, right. uh, uh, be at a higher risk of it turning into cancer. Well, I think anyone that has a mammogram needs to be aware of DCIS as a possibility because so many people are diagnosed through mammography. It doesn't show as a lump. You don't feel anything. You're asymptomatic. Most women are healthy. So um, they need to be educated on what DCIS is rather than be shocked and then thrown into these treatment choices and, and not have you know, the knowledge. So my blog, DCIS411, really kind of shares that information plus resources um, so that women can know 
that they have options, right. and that there is Make this alternative thought process about active surveillance. Sure, some, uh, some uh, like you say, some thought process and in going into it. And we have to end very quickly on this, Dr. Batra. Uh, what would you like to see happen? Would you like to see another study, and will this change your practice? I definitely think we need to do another study. Uh, I think there it hasn't been a secret that we're over-treating this disease, um, and so I think we do need a prospective trial. And I do know that there are some things that are in the works now, so um, hopefully in the next few years we'll see some new data that can help us change our practice. All right, Dr. Rima Batra and Donna Pinto, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.